just talk to us about what goes into your particular aspect of how you launch a film. Brian, if you want to start out, what's involved right from the beginning? When do you get involved? Well, for IFC, I mean, we mainly pick up films on the film festival circuit, finished films. We're not in production right now. So we're usually at festivals looking for films and, um, you know, seeing reactions to movies um, to be written about because we don't work with huge marketing budgets. I mean, most of the films we work on at IFC are primarily publicity driven. Brian, how about you? Um, same thing. I mean, I, uh, I don't necessarily go to as many of the festivals, but I so I've come into the process after our acquisitions team uh, picked up the film. We just recently started to uh, produce films. We're producing one called Blue Valentine with um, Michelle Williams and Ryan Gosling that's coming out. But for the most part, it's uh, acquisition based. Uh, I'll come in, you know, uh, send out the press releases, get all the marketing and press materials uh, ready to go with regards to uh, adding it to our website, um, making sure the staff knows about everything, and then just jumping in at that point to hire PR agencies and getting the whole publicity plan together. Now Donna, you come at this from a very different angle. You're at the film right at the beginning. Yes, um, Focus Features uh, produces the film. Um, we have a production department and we get involved at the script stage. Uh, when the script has actually been finalized and is going to get the green light, the publicity department actually gets involved in production by hiring um, a person who handles all publicity on the set called the unit publicist. And they work closely with the unit photographer who is responsible for taking photos on the set um, during production to get material which we will use later on during publicity for the film. Um, we're not really considered a major, but we're still not really an indie. We work on smaller budgets, but of late we've been working with very A-list talent, which has sort of um, provided some challenges because a lot of these people are used to working on very big budgets, budget films, and used to getting you know certain kind of treatment, and we don't have these budgets. So um, it's we're going through a transition now on how do you work with you know, these A-list actors who, you know, demand a lot that we're not really able to provide with them. Um, and if I guess the best way to look at publicity is if you look at the movie as like a rocket and all the different areas like marketing and distribution as a booster. So publicity is just one of the boosters on this rocket and we all kind of work together. And, uh, and at Focus, we do work very closely um, with marketing and distribution. It's really important to get the word out. Jeff, how about you? Well, now I'm going to throw the whole confusion into this. After 20 years, my mom still doesn't know what I do because I think <laughs> I, I wear a lot of hats. These guys are all my clients or have been at all their different things and will be hopefully in the future. But I work for them, but I also work for the producer of the movie a lot. Um, I don't publicize actors. I don't want to do hair and makeup and clothing and babysit, but producers and directors are my game and I kind of get attach myself onto those films possibly even before production in a script stage if they're getting funding. Um, writing releases for, you know, saying it's been acquired by these guys. I take these films. I'm a unit publicist sometimes. I do work in New York basically, but I've flown around the country to different sets for a couple of days and we'll get into that about our jobs later on and what it really entails. But um, And then film festival wise, like everybody has said here, I take a film, half of my films are say Ryan's film or Donna's film at a film festival and I'll work with the client, but the other is I'm there with the director and the producer to sell it and we'll work with these guys and with the press to get favorable response and get placements to sell the picture. We're part of that booster system on that rocket. So I guess it's not, it's a weird, you have films in development, you have films in production, you have films in release, and I'm, I'm, I'm involved in all three of those stages at some point. And most of the time it, it's great to be from the stage one to all the way through until the day it releases. So um, it's, a, it's not as challenging as it sounds. It's, um, I don't want to make it seem the easiest job in the world, but it certainly is a fun job. And um, 
but each you know. film presents different challenges. Yeah, it's just so kind it's of just making your way through those. And really, we're, we, uh, the, these, I, I love to say the joke, so let me say it. It's, it's PR, not ER. Like, it really <laughs> is, people get so frustrated when it's their film and their baby. And, you know, we're here to calm them down, too. That's a lot of our thing is just to talk them down from their, you know, me, high let, dive. <laughs> let me pick up on your rocket metaphor, Donna. If the bullseye is the press, I mean, all of you have mentioned the importance of the press. Have you found the, imp this, the press itself has less weight given the Internet age? Um, I think the, it's sort of shifted. I mean, when I first started, the press that really meant the most was, was the newspaper press and um, certainly the critics. They were venues where you could actually sit and read a review, and the reviews were really long and thoughtful, and you could actually read real criticism. But over the past few years, it's everything has now become, you know, internet, and it's, everything is online, and people aren't reading reviews the way we were reading reviews. There's a, many more movies coming out. Um, everybody is a critic now, and. I find that as publicists, we have to change as well as since the press is changing, and I think the critics don't really have as much power as they used to. I mean, there were certain critics that if you you know you didn't get a good review by this critic, you wouldn't go see the film. You know, it's they would make it or break it for you, and now it's all about you know online. You know, it's all about ain't it cool. Do you think it's because there's 15 movies opening a weekend now instead of five like there used to be? Absolutely. Yeah. But it also depends on what you define as press <coughs> online. I mean, just because you have a website and you have a blog doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're press. I mean, with traditional media, you, you have an editor. You have sort of a, a filter of what you're saying. I mean, if people just want to say anything they want about a movie, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best opinion or it's an opinion that someone should read, but it seems like everything now is a lot, a lot, uh, very blog-focused and... You know, I mean, we're just trying to focus on on getting the you know traditional reviews online. You know, if we can, if you know, we're not going to get reviewed by a certain paper, we want to make sure it at least gets online because anyone will be able to see it. And then you have the Rotten Tomatoes and the other websites that sort of you know call it all together. So it's it, it really just depends on what in what New you York need. the agencies that you hire and also you guys, your people that are you are, we do a pretty good job at blocking out like who's bogus and who's good and we right. have a judgment of that like we will let someone into our world if they're they can prove the hits or they're just like writing some pretty great stories or features or something but if they're just writing little Joe Blow bloggy it takes them a while to get into that screening and into that like press day and stuff so but once that movie opens it's a free-for-all for anyone mm -hmm. who wants great. to go out I mean, and you know write about something mm -hmm. but I think for like for a lot of the films I work on, I mean, we have a real hit list of what we consider important and people that we go after. And I think in New York, especially on specialty art house films, I mean, the New York Times is still the it's most fun. important publication. I mean, we live and die by what the <laughs> reviews and the Times and the features that we get. Um, so that's, you know, that's a huge part, even in terms of setting our release dates for some of these films, no matter how big or small they are. I mean, we look at what else is coming out that week and what we're going to be up against and and you know it's reflected in the box office yeah. immediately like mm -hmm. you get all bad reviews in the other papers and the new york times is amazing and your gross is huge that week yeah and but, and it, i mean the more movies that open the more your placement is um affected in the times and i think that's really important for some of these movies i mean when we can get for some of the movies we've released this year um you know like front page placement it's made a huge difference in our openings i mean for very tough films i'd say because I you, think the films that we all work on are clearly review-driven films. They're and not and do you care if it's Manola Dargis or A.O. Scott? Does either one? Do we have to comment yes. on that? Right? <laughs> <laughs> not we, not no, I mean, clearly, I mean, we, have, we <coughs> understand and we know the taste. We would think we know which films certain critics like. So we're hoping that if you're working on a specific film that you get a particular critic The problem to is, is with the New York Times, we hope that it's that person, but they have right. changed their policies as of like five years ago after Janet Maslin moved over to books, and now you just get a committee of, I'll take this one, this one, this one. 
we used to think that we would be influential in discussing that with them off the record and mm -hmm. kind of doing it and maneuvering them, but that doesn't work anymore. Let me open to the yeah. audience for just a second. How many of you base your movie-going tastes here in New York on reading the critics of the New York Times? And there's your answer. Uh, I think we have a mighty show of right. five hands. And what about Rotten Tomatoes? We're up to ten. Can anyone name a site that you think more than ten people in this room read as a basis to go to movies? What do you think? IMDb. IMDb. What? Which just has a, that external reviews. Yeah. Can I ask something? How many of you go to a movie because a friend of yours told you that it was a really good movie? It's just there about it word of mouth. Word of mouth. mouth. So let's take it from there. How do you all control word of mouth? Well, we set up uh, screenings beforehand. I mean, we work with different schools and film groups to uh, screen the film anywhere from, you know, two to five weeks in advance to try and get uh, interest in certain demographics. I mean, there's a great group called uh, Media Educators that we like to do, and it's just teachers in the New York area that will come and see the movie. So you have an interesting word of mouth there if it's a film that, you know, maybe hits a certain demographic. And, you know, certain film schools, uh, depending on the age group of what you're trying to target, really, really helps out a lot in both New York and L.A. Mm -hmm. NYU, Columbia, SVA, School of Visual Arts, a lot of those places have those programs and we show our movies and director. But you also have these, we aren't in that position to spend a lot of money. Possibly Focus will do a marketing or an ad like promo thing you see in The Voice or Time Out or online or something and you go see it at like 34th Street. Those things are done by larger studio companies and that's pretty much a with bigger us, it's, way of doing it. But with yeah. us, it's, it's, a, it's a tickets thing. I mean, how big of a word of mouth screen do you want to do when it's right. starting to give away tickets of people that would potentially see it? So it's a, it's a catch-22. I mean, do you have a big enough word of mouth screening where people will go talk about it, or you over-screen it for word of mouth, and then there's no one to go to the box office to spend it? And there's so much pressure on the first weekend now for independent movies that y you have to just find that balance, and it's not an easy thing to do. We're just